In this video, I'm going to show you how to make non-destructive changes on top of pre-existing animation inside of Unreal Engine. And there are several ways to do this, but in this particular case, I'm going to show you how to use layered control rigs to get the job done. And as a quick reminder, I do have an animation YouTube channel if you want to go even deeper into these topics, as well as my own courses where I teach animation in Unreal Engine super, super in-depth. So with that, let's jump in. Here we are in our sample project. I'm currently looking at shot 52, which has all these robots firing these fun little laser weapons. Now, to get here, I am just in the episodes intro beta, and it is right here, shot 52. I'm in this level sequence. I'm currently just in, you know, a blank environment, just because I think it's cool to be able to see exactly what's in this particular shot. And so if I hit play, this is what we've got with our characters. Now, uh, just as a quick heads up, these fun little you know, laser blasts are actually not 3D elements. If I leave the camera view and go find my camera, I can look really closely here and you'll see that the laser blasts are actually 2D hand-drawn animations on a little media plane in front of the camera. Super fun. Uh, just in case you're looking for the blasts. They won't, they won't be there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make some changes to the animation of this robot without dealing with all of the original keyframe data. Because as I've shown in a previous video, we have different options of dealing with this animation data. Uh, we have the baked animation, which is a subsequence that inside of here has this robot basically being piloted by an animation clip, an animation sequence, uh, prepackaged animation data that the animator has created, baked down, and we're now using this clip to drive the character. But if I navigate back out, I can go back to the anim work, which I believe, if I go ahead and mute the baked animation, and so if I go in here and I unmute the control rigs, I can see that one of these, I don't know which one it is, is it the top one? Yes. Uh, this anim work subsequence actually contains the character with the entire live control rig. And so I think it's robot number, robot number one? Robot number one, here it is. So inside of here, I've got all of this animation data, the original keyframes, that's great. But let's say I don't want to mess with the original keyframe data. Like, I don't want to touch this robot. I think it's perfect. I think it's great. I don't want to mess with it. He looks awesome. But I want to tweak it. But I want to tweak it non-destructively in a way that doesn't make me deal with all this other data that someone else has already done stuff with. So one of the options we have is I'm going to go back to my shot sequence. I'm going to mute the live control rig again go back to the baked animation where everything is just already set up. And I'm going to go into this baked animation subsequence and find this particular character, robot number one. Here he is. So you can see that this character, if I mute the character, boop, gone. Uh, the, the character, the weapons, each part has its own animation baked off individually. So what I want to do is specifically make maybe some posing override. Maybe I want to make some changes where when he fires his gun, maybe I want his head to spin around or something. Just a fun little cartoony spin. Now to do this, we have a lot of different options. In the previous video, I showed that you could bake this animation sequence down, which will give us all the keyframes, but then that's a lot of data to sort through. Instead, what I want to do is I want to, I want to just add a rig on top of this existing animation data. Now to do that, if I select this character, this particular skeletal mesh asset here in the sequencer, I can add a control rig directly to it right here with control rig. Now, if I just do this by itself, scroll down and find the robot control rig, you'll notice it won't go exactly as you might expect. If I select this, the character disappears. He's actually just over at origin somewhere over there. So I'll select the character, hit F, and there he is. Now you'll notice I got the control rig. I got what I wanted, but Unreal is basically listening to me a little bit too much. It says, oh, hey, you had animation data on this character, but you added a rig. You want to override it? What do you want to do? Well, I didn't want to do all the animation myself. I wanted to sort of build off of what was already there. And so the way it's evaluating right now is it's saying, hey, there is an animation sequence currently here, but let's go ahead and ignore that and just let you do your work. Ah, it's not what I wanted. Let's go ahead and just delete the rig off the character. Boop. And the character is now back over there listening to that animation sequence again which is a crazy thing, by the way, that we just deleted the rig off of a character. That's what just happened. Anyways, this time what I want to do is I want to do it in a particular way. I want to add the control rig, but in a layered capacity. So let's do the same steps. Click on this character, add a control rig, but this time I'm going to use this little checkbox at the top that says layered. And now it'll add the control rig on top of the existing animation sequence data. So now I can go ahead and scrub, and you can see that all that animation is still there. And what's cool is 
What's different from just baking from the animation sequence to a layered or to a regular control rig is in this case, when I select, say, the head control, there's no keyframes on it. There's no data whatsoever. So if I look closely, we still have the animation sequence, and that's where all this motion is coming from. But the robot control rig is empty. There's no keys anywhere on here. My recommendation is just off the bat, let's go ahead and just set a key on the whole character. Best practice is just to set a key on a full control rig at some point, just so auto key is ready for any changes we make. So now, you know, he'll go ahead in here, he'll pull his weapon up. I'll zoom out a little bit so we can see. Do, 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 do. Let me select his head control, set a key with S, bam. And now I'll go ahead and just spin him around. Whee! There you go. Now, I just spun him 360 degrees or so, but if I go ahead and scrub, it doesn't look like it happened. Now, the reason for this, this is a little bit different than Maya. Unreal is actually trying to prevent gimbal lock and any issues like that. And so even though I just spun the rotation ball around 360, Unreal recognized that the original pose was not that different from the final pose. He was still facing forward in both cases. And so it kind of corrected that 360 over rotation and said, are you sure you want to do that? And so what I want to do is actually just grab the rotation in Z, grab this little, um, grab the keyframe, and I'll just do the same math operation that I might be used to in Maya. Now I could drag this, I could just move this up 360 degrees, or I could use the same math operations that I'm used to in tools like Maya, or I can come up to my value and say plus equals 360. Boop. And that'll now whoo, do a math operation that adds 360 degrees to that value. So now the head spins. She goes like that, pew, right? So that's fun. Um, now what I can do is jump back into my camera view, which actually I can't see my camera here. Uh, it's in the main sequence, right? Right here's a little camera cuts track. I can see my main camera button here, but if I'm in this baked animation sequence in particular, I don't have a button for my camera. There are different ways to get to my camera, but in case you're ever in this situation, I can go ahead and just add a camera cut track here. And because this level sequence is tied to the other one in the breadcrumbs, this will access the same camera. So anyways, now I'm gonna play, he runs in and pew, his head spins around. Pew. And that's kind of fun. But what's cool about this and why I call it non-destructive is this animation is on its own separate layer, right? I can grab that head control, I can look at the curves, and that's the only thing I have going on, just that one spinning animation. It doesn't affect the state, it doesn't affect the data that was already there. And if I'm not sure I really like it, what's nice is this control rig can be muted. So if I go into the middle here and say, oh, I don't know if I like, you know, this change that I'm making, I can just mute the control rig altogether. Just turn it off. Now I can see what it looked like before my change. And that's the original data, right? He runs in, does his thing, fires. But I can go ahead and say, now turn back on my control rig. And you can see that I'm basically turning on and off the control rig in real time, which is rigging and I'm rigging the character, but I'm just hiding it for the moment. So I'll turn it back off, no spin, turn it back on, spin. And so that's a really cool way that we can add animation data with clean curves on top of an existing animation sequence. Super, super handy. This feature came out in 5.4 and you can use it just across the board in everything you do in Unreal Engine from now. Um, it's an optional feature. And if you ever want to adjust it after the fact, you go, oh, I added this. I didn't want it to be layered or I did want it to be layered. You can also right click on it and there is a convert to layered checkbox. Though I do recommend instead of using this checkbox, it tends to work a little bit more seamlessly if you, when you're first adding the control rig, you pick at that point. Some rigs don't have a problem. Some rigs get a little bit funny, and that's just based on the way that the logic was created for the actual control rig. So my recommendation, hope it helps, and uh, I hope you enjoy using layered control rigs to add non-destructive animation onto these different animation sequences for our project. In the next videos, I'm gonna show you some other semi-non-destructive ways to work with the keyframe data directly and animation layers. See you there.